Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time. But this week we're gonna do something a little bit different. It's not a traditional lecture that you guys are used to in terms of a bottoming tail, a topping tail, support, resistance, et cetera, and so forth. This week we're gonna be talking about my monitors, but not just the monitor, my trading setup, how I lay out my monitors, where I put certain charts, where I put my order entry. I get all kinds of questions of, well, how can you watch so many stocks at the same time, right? How do you put a small chart versus a big chart? Do you use one order entry? Do you use two order entries? Do you use three order entry matrices, right? So all of those things I get questions frequently, and I've never actually done a video on this topic. On top of that, I'm also gonna show you guys what I use when I travel, right? One of the best parts about being a trader is the freedom and the flexibility to do it whenever you want, wherever you want. Well, we're gonna talk about that today, right? So behind me, I have my rig, my 49 inch LG monitors, which we're gonna see here in just a second. But when I travel, I use a laptop, I use a little 16 inch monitor. Sometimes I hook up to a hotel TV, et cetera. But we're gonna take a look at all of that. So you don't wanna miss it. As always, guys, if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, if you will, and don't forget those click notifications. You know that little bell? You definitely wanna click that so you get emails whenever I drop a new video. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so one of the main things I get asked is how do you place stuff on your platform? For example, um, dollar gainers, dollar losers, how do you scan for your watch list is probably the biggest question that I get asked. The next question I get asked is, what do you do with those stocks after you find them? So you scan for them, which we'll do here in just a second, uh, and then where do they go, right? What do you do with them? Um, after that question is, how do you watch so many stocks at one time, right? You have a list of 10, 20 ideas, but you only have limited real estate on your screen, right, on your monitor. Um, so we're gonna go off and talk about that as well. And then the last question I get asked is, how do you put in your order entry so quickly? Like sometimes you'll look at an idea and literally five seconds later, you're in that stock, Jared. How do you do that? So that's pretty much what we're gonna talk about here today with this. So what I have here in front of me is my 49 inch LG monitor, okay? And on the right hand side of my monitor, what you're gonna see here, guys, is the chat room, okay? just where I keep the chat members because it's easy for me to talk to them, it's easy for me to post ideas to them. What you're gonna see in the middle here is my scanning monitor as well as my order entry monitor, which we'll get to in a second. And on the left-hand side, all the way over here, what you're gonna see is what I call my thumbnail watch list. That's where I watch all those ideas. And you'll see here at the top, it's color-coded in green for long ideas. And at the bottom, it's color-coded in like a peach, pink color, it's supposed to be red, but you can't see red. Um, and those are for short ideas. And then there's actually two more over here, and those are actually for the spiders and the cues, which is how I watch the market. I use the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 to do that. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at, guys, is scanning. So the market just closed here about an hour ago, all right? So tomorrow we'll have a gap list in the morning, and this is how I'm gonna make it. So I use TradeStation dollar gainers and dollar losers. And you'll note, it's just a stock trade station scan. It's actually considered a hot list scan, okay? A hot list scan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the drop down menu right up here, and you'll notice there's one day, 10 day, 30 day, five day, et cetera. I just use the one day gainers, okay? Click on it, boom, and it populates. And notice I have it set for not percentage change, but dollar change. And one of the big questions I get all the time is, why is it set for dollar gainers and not percentage gainers? Because guys, I don't generally speaking like to trade penny stocks. And if you set it for percentage gainers, you're gonna get a lot more penny stocks. Now, I'm not faulting people who scan for percentage gainers. If you wanna trade zero to $20 stocks, then a percentage gainer scan might be better for you. But again, I don't like to trade the lower price stocks quite as much. So I use a dollar gainer scan, which has fewer or less of the little stocks on there. So You'll notice what's on my screen now is NTES, which is actually a stock I traded today. And you'll know if you go down the list here, it's not right on the first page, but if we scroll down just a little bit more, I'm scrolling with my mouse button, there it is, Netties. All right, so I can see here, whoops, just pulled off the screen there. I can see here, guys, on the NTES, it's number 53 on the list, 
132.42 is up $8 or 6.68% today. Now, that's what happened all day today. The point simply is this is where I'm finding my gapping stocks. Now, obviously, you're going to have to take professional trading strategies to figure out why this was a good gap today. Well, I'll teach you a little bit. It's gapping over a topping tail or a red bar with a topping tail from yesterday, and it's gapping over a prior pivot. So notice this stock has moved up. It pulled back. It moved up. It pulled back. It moved up. And then it stalled right at resistance. That's exactly what this stock is supposed to do. Stall right at resistance. Okay. So that resistance point was $128.38. Yesterday's high was $126.86, right? I draw a line on it. Well, that reasons to believe that if we can get over this area here of $128.66 right there, there's nothing above us. There are no sellers up there to sell into us. So Nettie's gapped over both of those pivots, both topping tails, which means it had room to go higher. Well, it did that, albeit in a little bit of a sloppy manner today, but we still pulled out some money. So that's how I scan, guys, dollar gainers and dollar losers. And when I go down the list, all I'm really looking for in the pre-market is really high volume and good gaps. I know good gaps is a bit of an esoteric term, but the truth of the matter is, we have a method to the madness, level one gaps, level two gaps, level three gaps, and that just depends on where it's gapping from, where it's gapping to, how much room that it has, the volume that it has, is there institutional interest in it? all those things you can learn in professional trading strategies, okay? So anyway, I like netties. So what do I do with netties? I put it on this list. You see this list that says daily longs? Technically, that means my gap list, okay? So I put it on my list right there, N-T-E-S. Well, I continue to scan and then I finally get through the whole entire list. And I'll make sure that I not only check those, I check all NASDAQ stocks. Nope, there's just NASDAQ. Then I'll check all New York stocks. Goes up and down a list. I'll make sure I thoroughly look at the list. When I'm done the long list, and you can see here, I had NTES, MDVL, COLL, and et cetera and so forth. So I had about six, five or six long ideas today. When I'm done the long watch, guess what I do? I go to daily losers, right? So this is dollar gainers. Let's go to dollar losers. And what do you have? All the stocks that went lower were gapped down today. All right. So in this case, we're set on New York stocks. I'll go to all on this. All right. And you can see here, Tesla is a stock we shorted today. We didn't make a ton of money on Tesla today, maybe five or 600 bucks. It wasn't that much money. Um, but you can see Tesla was one of the stocks um, that we looked to, to play today because it was at the top of the losers list. Some of the other stocks that we looked to short today were Amazon, T2, um, Exxon Mobil, et cetera, and so forth. Now, for example, let's take TTWO. Uh, it gapped under two, not one, but two wide range green bars under a pivot and had some room to go lower. Now, it didn't do exactly what we wanted it to do today, but another stock we eked about, I don't know, four or 500 bucks out of today. Okay. Not a great trade, but we still made a little bit of money off of it. Okay. So where do I put that? On my daily short idea. So now I have my long ideas over here. I have my short ideas down there. Great. Are we done? No, we're not done yet, guys. Where do these stocks go? Well, the first, next thing we need to do is go to my battle station. So you'll notice up here, there's several things on the screen. We have my order entry to the left here. This is what TradeStation calls the matrix. So on Netties, for example, you can see I made $418.53 on this today. All right. So Netties is right there on my list. So basically what I did, guys, is I went over here and I clicked on this and I just went like this all the way down the list. I hit copy the list right there. I go over here and literally I right click and I paste the list. That's it. So that's how I get the list from the other screen to this screen. I just paste it. And when I paste it, it populates all these charts right here. Okay, so what you're seeing is my order entry on the left-hand side right over here. You're seeing my list of stocks that I'm watching right here. And then whatever stock I click on, it populates that screen. And you'll notice there are five time frames here. There's a five-minute chart, a 15-minute chart, a two-minute chart, a one-minute chart, and a daily chart. Now, the reason the 60-minute chart isn't on there is because I like to have extra space down here for the trades that I'm in, okay? Um, and I already looked at the 60-minute chart before I got onto the list. It would have never gotten onto the list had it not passed inspection on the 60-minute chart. Got it? Okay. So the next question I get asked is, well, that's a lot of stocks to watch. I mean, you're looking right there at like 15 ideas, Jared. I mean, what do you just go click, click? click, click, click. No, that's not what I do. 
I take these ideas, okay, and I rate them from one to six in this case. And on the loser side, the, the losers, I rate those from one to seven in this case. What's my favorite long idea? And what's my favorite short idea? And when I rate them, then I put them on what I call my thumbnail watch list over here. So you can see the first stock I watched today was NTES. The second stock I watched was MDVL. The third stock was COLL, et cetera, and so forth, right? And then on the short side, I liked Amazon as my top short watch today. I liked TTWO as my second. I liked IPWR, et cetera, and so forth. Now, if you look at what I actually traded today, guess what? I traded pretty much everything that was on my list, but you'll notice there was one stock, you know, that pesky little company named Tesla that I traded that wasn't actually on my list today. Now, where did that come from? Chat room, chat room, chat room. Why am I saying this to you? Because for those of you that aren't in a live traders chat room, you should be, all right? But even if you don't wanna to come to the live traders chat room, it's always good to spend time around like-minded people. Well, one of the benefits of the chat room is ideas. So yes, I have a lot of ideas, but every once in a while, you know, somebody in the chat room will bring up an idea and I go, you know what? That's pretty good, I like that. I'm gonna trade that myself. So that made me more money today. Now, I didn't make a ton of money on Tesla today, but Again, you make some money, good, bad, but that's the benefits of a chat room. So point being is I put all these stocks on my thumbnail watch list in the order in which I like them, okay? And then after that, I have the longs on the top, I have the shorts on the bottom, and then I always look at the market, right? I see the SPY, which is the S&P 500, and I see the Qs. The other thing you'll notice here is they're all on two minute timeframes. Why are they on two minute timeframes? They're on two minute timeframes simply because I trade the first 30 minutes of the day very, very frequently, right? 30 to 45 minutes and I'm done. I don't wanna sit at my desk all day. I have things to do, I have businesses to run, I have a family to handle, right? All that stuff, okay? So long as on the top, shorts on the bottom, the market right here. When the market opens, guess what I do? I literally, not figuratively, literally, I stare at that screen. I'm just sitting here like this, that's it. Not doing anything, guys, I'm just staring. Mm -hmm. You bored yet? Guess what? Good trading's really boring, but it makes a lot of freaking money, okay? So I'm sitting here staring, doing my thing, mm -hmm, bumping out, boom, I see something I like, I click on it over here. Ah, okay, I like this stock over here. So I'll give you an example of that, EKSO today, all right? So we saw EKSO today, bring it over right here, all right? I'll bring this up, I'll blow it up a little so you guys can see it. Right, blow it up right there, and I see this little pattern over here, $10, $10, look, $10, $10, $10. What do I do? I ready my order to short this at $10, okay? So I, I pull this down here, I go right up to there. I think I had 3,500 shares of it right there. I click short, boom, it went down 29 cents. Guess what my target was? 29 cents. You know what it did? It went all the way down to $9.71 and filled a quarter of my shares and then came back. So I only made $417 on this, but I was up over a thousand. There's nothing you can do about it. I had 3,500 shares and only printed a thousand shares down there. Oh, well, if it had gone one penny more, I make a thousand bucks. It went one penny less, I made 400. Oh, well, but my point is, where did that come from? Me being bored over here going, okay, what's, what's happening? What's happening? EKSO is happening. I pulled up on the big screen going, wow, I really like that. I put my order in. I place the order, I set my bracket, and then you just manage in between, okay? So basically, guys, that's what I do for the first 30 minutes of every day, really the first 45 minutes from 9.30 to 10.15. That's exactly how I set up my rig, okay? And sometimes I find ideas from the gap list, which is most of my ideas. Sometimes I find stocks from the carryover list, which was yesterday's ideas. And other times I find them just from the chat room, okay? So I hope you guys learned a little bit about how I set up my platform. Um, as you'll also notice, I don't use a lot of indicators on here. You'll, so you saw basically from how I scan, how I build my watch list, how I use my order entry, and also my, my uh, thumbnail watch list charts on the left-hand side as well. So now what I wanna do guys is I wanna just take a minute, kind of change gears a little bit and show you what I do when I travel.
As I alluded to earlier, guys, I wanted to talk a little bit about my travel rig because, you know, one of the best parts about trading is that we can do it from anywhere in the world, which is awesome. How do I accomplish that? I use this trusty old 15 inch razor blade laptop combined with a 16 inch Asus um, portable monitor. This thing's like a half inch thick. It might not even be that thick. It's connected and gets its power from a USB-C cable that goes into the laptop. On top of that, I have a power cable for the laptop, which you don't always need if you're completely powered up. And then I just simply have uh, a mouse that's connected by USB also. So that's three cables, guys. And you don't even need the power cable sometimes if you're only gonna trade the open for maybe nine to 10 o'clock. I'm sure your laptop can get at least an hour, right? Um, but one of the things you'll notice, you know when you travel, everything's miniature, right? You get those miniature shampoos and miniature toothpaste. I mean, you can tell I can't travel with miniature shampoo. I mean, I need the big bottles. Um, but when you travel, everything's miniature. Well, guess what? This is my miniature setup. And you'll notice there's nothing different about this setup than my actual at-home rig. So sure, I have a 49-inch curved LG screen at home. This is 15 inches, 16 inches, but note, it's exactly the same. I have my matrix here in the middle, right? I have my charts over here. I have my watch list over here, ZM, NETE, et cetera, and so forth. It's exactly the same, but it's much more compact. You fold up the laptop, you put the monitor on top of it, and what do you have? About an inch thick and about four or five pounds, literally, no exaggeration. Pack it in your backpack and you're done. You're off to the races. Find yourself an internet connection, done. If you happen to forget, if you happen to forget your monitor, your portable monitor, I have one more trick up my sleeve. I simply connect to the hotel TV via HDMI port or something like that, and I'll show you that in just a second. So if you for some reason forgot your portable external monitor like the one I just showed you guys, you can always plug into the TV in the hotel room. Usually they're somewhere between 32 and 60 inches. I'm in my guest casita, so it's a 75 inch, but literally you, I always carry an HDMI cable with me. I take the HDMI cable, I plug it into the back of the television, the other end into my laptop, and you are done. You can not only mirror the screen, but you can extend your screen. So it makes very easy for intraday trading off of a laptop, projecting onto the hotel TV. Usually there's a desk below it or something there that you can sit in front of. I found it to be very helpful and very useful. I hope you guys found this video to be very helpful and very useful, where you got an inside look at my trading rig, my trading platform, how I set things up, how I travel with trading, and also what I do when I go to a hotel. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. I'll see you guys again next week.